6th of March 1945, the battle for the German city of Cologne was in full swing, with elements of the US 3rd Armour Division penetrating the city towards its famous cathedral. Previously, I made a film about the famous tank duel outside the cathedral between a German Panther and a brand new US tank, then called the T-26E3, later known, of course, as the Pershing, which was being trialled in combat. But at the same time that the Pershing was proving its worth in urban combat in Cologne, another Pershing met its match nearby in the town of Neal, being engaged by one of the rarest German armoured vehicles deployed on the Western Front. The brief engagement would end with the only Pershing destroyed in combat in Europe. Operation Lumberjack, the US First Army's drive into Western Germany over the Ruhr River, would bring US divisions to the Rhine from Cologne to Remagen. German resistance was backed by a line of 45 anti-tank positions stretching for 70 kilometers, backed up with some understrength Volksgrenadier and Panzer divisions. Lumberjack commenced on the 23rd of February 1945. German resistance was patchy, though fierce in places. German armor in the west had been squandered in the pointless Battle of the Bulge in the winter of 1944 to 45. So Panzer units were under strength and padded out by training school staffs and students, and the tanks, including Tiger Ones and Tiger Twos, were a mixture of recently repaired vehicles and fresh replacements. The Americans, on the other hand, faced no such limitations. The 3rd and 9th Armoured Divisions were at full strength and pushed forward with devastating artillery and aerial support. And among the armoured regiments were 20 brand new Pershing tanks making their combat debut. Intended as a replacement for the M4 Sherman, the Pershing was designed to give it the edge over German tanks like the Panther and Tiger I. Mounting a 90mm M3 gun and better armour than the Sherman, much was expected of the new type. The 20 sent to Europe in January 1945 was split between the 3rd and 9th armoured divisions in the US 1st Army. The Pershing first saw action on the 25th of February, two days into Operation Lumberjack, when a T-26E3 named Fireball engaged a Tiger I at Ellsdorf. The 33rd Armoured Regiment Pershing was disabled in a brief duel with the German Tiger I of Schwerer Panzerabteilung FKL-301. I deal with this in another of my previous films. Fireball was hit three times, the fatal shot penetrating the upper lip with the aperture for the coaxial machine gun on the left side of the gun mantlet, killing two crewmen inside the turret. However, this tank was later repaired and returned to service. Originally issued with just five T-26E3s, 33rd Armoured had distributed them around its companies to serve alongside regular Shermans. For the opposing Germans, they had never seen the Pershing before, and it looked very different from the smaller and taller Shermans that accompanied each T-26 in combat. On the 6th of March 1945, Company H, 33rd Armoured Regiment, part of the US 3rd Armoured Division's Task Force Hogan, was advancing just before dawn on German positions near the village of Glesch, near the Erft Canal, not far from Neal. German resistance was collapsing in the face of strong US armoured thrusts, but though weak, German armed forces were still capable of springing some nasty surprises. Hidden in a hull-down position was one of the rarest German armoured vehicles, a Nuzhorn Panzerjäger or tank destroyer, an open-top vehicle based on the chassis of the Panzer IV and mounting probably the most devastating anti-tank weapon of the war. At 24 tons, the Nashorn, German for rhinoceros, was half the weight of the Pershing. It was also tall and lightly armoured, but this didn't matter, for it was designed to kill tanks from beyond the range of their enemy's guns. It was a kind of tank sniper. Relatively cheap to produce and very mobile, the Nashorn mounted the most lethal gun on the World War II battlefield, the 8.8cm Pac-43. Its tungsten carbide cord round could punch through 190 mm of rolled steel armour at 30 degrees from one kilometre. Designed for the flat expanses of the Eastern Front, Nashorns had taken out Soviet T-34s from an astonishing distance of three and a half kilometres. Now, outside the village of Glesch in Western Germany, a hull-down Nashorn of 2nd Company 
Schwerer Panzer Jäger Abteilung 93 lined up on the largest Allied tank its commander could see, the squat, much larger Pershing from among the herd of advancing Shermans. On this occasion, the range was with the Allies, but though the Pershing got to within 300 yards of the Nashorn, it never saw the German tank destroyer. The Nashorn fired as if dealing with a Sherman, firing low, the shells slamming into the lower bow, passing between the driver's legs before setting off a fire in the turret. The crew abandoned the tank and survived, and ten minutes later the ammunition exploded, burning out the turret and the front end of the hull, causing its total loss. Written off, the wreck was later cannibalized for spare parts. This was the only purging of the 20 to sea combat in Europe that was destroyed by enemy action. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share, and also support my channel at PayPal and Patreon. Details in the description box.